Okay, well, I guess this is the tough one, the final question, and I'm gonna go straight to Craig. What makes a business idea investable? Well, I think we've done the founder part to death, but I think that we, we, we look for um, product market fit. So there's, there's some, so there's some, some evidence that customers give a shit about your product. And it's you know, some sort of engagement metrics or cohort analysis that says, says it doesn't matter what I think or what you think, or your customers love your product and will they keep coming back over and over again? And then can you expand that into a market? And that's the first thing. So I think the second thing is, you know, at some point, you know, sadly, you've got to make money out of it. And so, you know, when's the revenue going to come flow? And we're in venture, so we, we don't need this right now. We know it's going to take time to build that, but you've got to have some sort of commercial analysis. So when's the revenue going to flow? And, and of course, you know, we're in the business of losing money for a while, but when are you going to pop out the other end and, and, and get to profitability? Uh, and, then, and I guess the, the third thing is, as I make your point, is, is this shared journey is, you know, it's got to work for everyone. It's got to work for the founder, they've got to get help and assistance, they've got to get support, they don't want to work with tickets. But also, as investors, you want to work with good people and you want to be able to support the founder along the way. And, you know, if that works well, it can be an amazing experience. If it doesn't, it can be horrible. Thank you. Uh, Trev? <laughs> yeah, look, uh, to me, it's about questioning the sales. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of founders have passion and, and a good background and skill set. Um, you know, can they prove that they can sell their product or service? Um, revenue, you know, in, in certain businesses is hard, you have to defer that, so um, that's fine. But have you tr uh, stress tested your business model? Have you got out there and proven that you can sell it? And, you know, how are you going to scale that? And, uh, you know, businesses that can't be um, proven that the, the scalability um, make it very hard to, for investors to get on board. Lisa? I think I'm going to have to go with passion and purpose all the way because if someone is passionate and they're 100% behind their product and their service and they've got their hustle on, they're prepared to back it, then we can build everything else around it. So that is what I look for every single time, attitude. Um, I think to my first two points were taken by Craig and Trevor. So I think it fundamentally comes down as an investor to pretty simply return on investment. I mean, you can love a product as an investor and it might really get you over the line and go, I believe people will buy this, or hopefully, to Trevor's point, you've proven it, almost like the lean startup model, we go out and just take a small snapshot, find 10 people and try, you know, that would be your target market, even before the product exists, pretend like the product exists, and just say, I've got this product, knowing that you full well you don't, and say, you know, would you be interested in buying that off me and tell, run them through it? If you can convince those 10 people to buy the product, or a good portion of them that you know you think would be an acceptable level for the type of product you have, then you're probably onto a winner. But at the end of the day, as an investor, you're investing your money because you want to see a return on that invest investment. And doesn't matter how passionate or you know um, charismatic or you know as good a salesperson as a person selling it might be, or you might be trying to pitch your idea. Just never forget that the person sitting in front of you has a certain amount of dollars that they want to see a return on. And you can sell them the dream, but you also have to sell them the dream that they're going to make their money back. And I know it might seem a little last century to actually have to have a product that makes money, but it is, it is the reality. And, you know, and, and at some days I think that you know, when the tide goes out, uh, the really true good uh, tech businesses of today will be the ones that are still there. Uh, at the end of the day, and I think a lot of the fakers will probably be washed away at the same time. So. Well, and as, as an investor, I'm looking for prototypes and beta testing with reference customers. So I want to know who the reference customers are. I want to be able to ring the reference customers up, find out what their experience was, not just rely on the, rely on the person who's pitching to me. Um, I also, or, or trying to get me to invest. I also want to make sure that the um, that the um, financials, the thing that they're presenting to me that I'm going to get a return on, actually makes sense. So I want someone to have run their eye over this to make sure that it will make sense. It adds up. It's got a you know it's a proper algorithm involved, proper assumptions being made, and that it has been stress tested. And then I guess finally, I come back, once all those things sort of, sort of set themselves up, I come back to knowing that there's scalability. I'm looking for scalability. I want to know that this can scale, not just in Sydney, not just in Melbourne, not Australia, but globally, you know, potentially, that's great. Scalability is really important. I mean, John's business is very, very scalable, but he doesn't have to keep popping up businesses everywhere all around the country, shop fronts to do it. John Winning, I'm talking about here. So scalability is really important. And then I go back to what Lee said. At the end of the day, all that thing, all those things,